Welcome car guys. Today if the car guy brings you a subcompact crossover that has crazy head turning and funky looks from outside and really cool from inside. This face resembles to that of a frog and this is something called as Nissan Juke. It was designed in Europe and it put the final makeup on in Japan. Its styling really is unique, combining crossover, super mini and SUV in a way like nothing else. Underneath though it's much more normal, Nissan calls the Juke as sports crossover. The idea behind the car's unconventional appearance is to invoke as many motorsports images as possible that starts at the front where headlights are embedded in the bumper that makes it Now let's get to the rear seats. If you notice the rear outer door handles have been integrated into window graphics giving it a two door coupe like look. Now here inside there is pretty decent amount of space for three people in the rear. If you look down here there is pretty decent amount of knee room however headroom is limited due to its sloping roof line. And my head is so near to the roof being only 5'9 and anyone sitting here 6 feet long have to struggle a lot. Now let's move on to the front seats. Now stepping inside you are greeted by one of the nicest instrument binnacles you will ever see in a car for this price range. The interior is adorned by mini SK circular motifs from the gauges to the air conditioning vents and the buttons on the center control panel. Everything is round and pleasing to the eye and touch. Now inside the Duke sitting position is high and upright and it fits the looks of the car on outside. This center console has been given a theme of motorcycle fuel time that looks really nice. It features a 1.5 litre inline 4 cylinder engine that kicks out 109 horsepower at 6000 rpm with 148 Nm of torque at 4000 rpm. It reaches no 200 in approximately 10 seconds with a top speed of 180 km per hour. If you go for a Nissan Juke Nismo powered by a 1.6 litre turbocharged engine, it reaches no 200 in just 6.7 seconds. That's a really fast machine. Nissan claims fuel economy of 18 km per litre, however, in our hands it's 16 km per litre, which is quite impressive. Now let us start her up. You just need to put your foot on the brake with fob in your pocket and push this ignition button. It has 16,583 kilometers on the clock. A welcome message by the Japanese lady. The driver information screen shows you some important parameters, for example, trip meter A, trip meter B, driving range within the available fuel, time, instantaneous fuel economy, average fuel economy. It has dropped significantly as I have been driving in the streets. And that's it. It does have automatic headlamps. It drives keenly and the engine is really smooth. The Duke has some of the best features I have ever tried. Just below the infotainment system is a small screen surrounded by a couple of cool transforming hard buttons. This interface basically shows and controls the climate control functions and now by pressing this drive mode button, 
This is interesting. It not only changes the screen, but also the icons on the hard button changes and they light up with different labels. Now I can toggle them to access driver information by pressing this button, like how long I have been driving, how much distance I have covered, what my average speed have been. And by pressing this eco button, I can see how economical I have been in the past few trips. From the setup button, you can change the settings of of different parameters like this D mode is the Duke's actual unique feature that lets the driver choose one of three personalities for the car you are presented with normal sport and eco driving modes and buttons on the right actually let you customize to some small extent those three driving modes each mode applies different parameters to throttle, steering and climate control. By default, normal puts all three in normal sport switches, throttle and steering to performance programs, leaving the climate control alone. And Eco actually detunes the throttle and climate control while keeping steering in its normal settings. Well, the first thing I was thinking about you was that how would it drive? It drives like an SUV or a car. Normally, it's quite difficult to make a car this tall to drive well. It looks like a crossover, but interestingly, it drives more like a car, which is really good. It feels stable. I just drove this Duke on a winding road while coming back from Dominico, and I have observed that the suspension held the car flat, making it quickly rotate on the corner apexes and respond quickly to steering input. The turning felt very neutral with negligible understeer. That is really great. And in my imagination, I keep on thinking about Duke Nismo that would be doing very well in tight turns of an autocross course. I am really pleased by how comfortable it is. The drive is predictable and very easy to get used to. It's typically sprung and lightweight. This high sitting position does provide a good commanding view of the road ahead. And it makes the Duke feel much bigger than actually it is. When you floor down the accelerator, it's quick. I would have to say it's really a fun little ride. Out of three different driving modes, my personal favorite is well, you can guess sports mode and you can really feel the difference in throttle mapping and we should also commend Nissan as the Duke seems perfectly tuned for the sad state of our roads. It has just enough sportiness to be fun but not too much that it would be uncomfortable in daily driving. The CVT transmission is really quick and here I would have to say that Nissan has done a fairly good job by making it sound and feel more like a traditional automatic gearbox. It would have been very good if it had those paddle shifters. The Nissan Duke has a lot of personality that is gonna go a long way. Main reason for buying Duke is for the way it looks. Buying a car is seldom a rational decision and often a decision fueled by passion and gut feel. Buying Duke would be one of those times actually. More austerity, the more I like it. The Duke completely grabs your attention and you will definitely refuse to let it go. The Duke puts the fun in funky, making it perfect for those who want a lively and speedy little runabout that also stands out in the traffic. Thank you. Thank you for watching us. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please leave a comment and stay tuned for upcoming reviews of new cars.